Hello, my name is Daniel Rogers, Duotech Services. Today, I talked a little bit about filters. What is a filter? What uh, what are we talking about? We're not we're not talking about an optical filter necessarily. Uh, we're not talking about a pool filter. Uh, we're not talking about the air filter in your car. What we're talking about is filters in terms of electronics. And what are they? What's going on? What's the purpose of them? Uh, why do you care? What's uh, what's significant about them? And what are some of the things that you need to know in this selection or the understanding of filters for you? Now. When it comes to filters, we have many different types. We, uh, you may have heard of low pass or high pass or band pass or notch. And you know, a low pass things that are on the low side of the frequency spectrum pass through. High pass things above a certain a level pass through. Band pass within a certain band, notch, the opposite of band pass, taking out a section of the spectrum that's causing you problems. Now, when it comes to understanding more than just the the basic. Uh, characteristic of a filter as to what kind it is, there's more to know. There, you, you need to understand, well, what are the terms when you talk about a filter? What, what, what are the characteristics that are important when you're looking at that? Well, here's an example of a low-pass filter. Now in this low-pass filter, you have this pass band. That's where your frequency will pass through. Now, anything that you have an analog filter and it is one that is passive, which means there's no active components, no op amps, no um, um, trains conduct example, there's nothing in there in order to provide you a gain, uh, especially when you look at RF filters, you're going to see a lot about insertion loss, how much your signal is taken away simply by going through that. Now, in here, we're, we're not really concerning ourselves with how much insertion loss or gain is, is coming through, but what we're looking at is from the signal, the part of the spectrum that I care about, what's happening here? How am I, how am I identifying and characterizing this? If I talk about my pass band and I have a stop band, well, Great, I have what I care about here, what I don't want here, and I'm getting rid of the part that I don't want. But it's not that simple. It's not as if we have a, a, a step where we come out here, we drop off, and there is no more spectrum to care about. We have to worry about, well, where's my cutoff? Quite often, that is defined as your three dB point, the point where you are three decibels below your pass band. Now, in this case, our pass band or our stop band transition, we have a, uh, a slope to that. Uh, quite often, think about a pole, for every pole you have in your filter, you're talking about a difference in about 20 dB per decade. Now, when we look at that and we say, okay, well, I'm coming up to a certain point, your analog filter, we often think about, if I'm taking a spectrum that I care about and I'm going into a digital filter, I need an analog front end, something to take out the part of the spectrum that would otherwise cause aliasing, take things that are beyond the sample rate, to beyond twice the sample rate, where we're talking about a Nyquist sampling rate, and getting rid of that. Well, just because I pass into my stop band and my sample rate is more than twice the rate of beyond frequency that I have in the spectrum cut off, doesn't mean that I'm okay. I, I need to worry about how much of the rest of this do I need to get rid of. Quite often, I think about a rule of thumb for those sorts of things, to be at least 30 decibels down from the pass band. So that means that I need to come out to a point where I'm about 30 dB below my pass band. This isn't tried and true for every design, but often if you're talking about uh, digital filters, those are things you need to be worried about. Otherwise, you'll be violating some of the fundamental building blocks of how those work, and you can easily have an unstable filter or one that's just giving you garbage, which whether it's ringing or whether it's oscillating or whether it's giving you garbage, you are not getting what you need in order to execute your design properly. Now, when we look at different kinds of filters and classifications, we're looking at topologies. What, with what polynomial was that built? So if we look at the very basic one, uh, Butterworth, where we have a pass band, we have a stop band, and then if I were to follow farther out here, it's going to come to some floor and there's no ripple. There's no variation in gain in my pass band or my stop band. Now, that sounds great. However, for the order of the filter, you have a slope that is not as aggressive as if you're doing an elliptical or a Chebyshev type filter. Now, the, 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 what you're trading there is the amount of variation and gain in the band you care about is a trade-off for how quickly you can approach that slope. Now, a Chebyshev filter we often think about as one that has ripple, but you have a type one and a type two. The type one has ripple in the pass band, the type two ripple in the stop band. I tend to gravitate toward like a Chebyshev Type 2 as a nice topology 
especially when you're looking at something where you're getting three or more poles. Because really, if you have two poles, it doesn't really so much matter for you in that because they're all pretty much going to be about the same. However, when you start looking three plus, especially when you hit that, about four poles, you're going to see some extremely aggressive changes in how much roll off you get for the order of the filter. Now, when you're looking at these, you see I have ripple in the pass band, but not the stop band. Here I have no ripple in the pass band, but I have ripple in the stop band. And when I look at my elliptical, I have ripple in both. And there are some very, very attractive characteristics of an elliptical filter, especially when you get higher orders where you have an extremely aggressive roll off for a lower component count. Now, here at Duotech, why am I bringing this up? Why am I talking to you about this? Well, whether you are an engineer that's approaching a problem or whether you're someone who's trying to understand what's going on in the field and what are some of these terms and characteristics, that's something that you need to understand, you need to be engaged with in order to make wise choices. Here at Duotech, we provide you the engineering expertise, whether it's designing filters, whether it's implementing digital signal processing systems, to understand these basics, these building blocks, to provide you solutions that get you the most reliable, inexpensive, and performance system for your money. If you have an opportunity, visit us at duotechservices.com. Follow us on Twitter.